I'd always been interested in um, history and in, through various readings and some maybe a little bit more sensationalized than, than others kind of came across um, the different aspects of Freemasonry over time periods, you know. And I can remember going to a funeral of my grandmother and going up to this, uh, the cemetery in Syracuse, New York and when we were putting her in the ground and then seeing a square and compass on all kinds of headstones that were, you know, distant relatives of mine, apparently, and had asked, like, oh, is that the same masonry? Oh, there's still Freemasons today, you know, and you occasionally see the big Masonic temple in a city that you were visiting, and I always thought that was a pretty interesting, oh, I don't know, landmark of various places, so after living in Black Mountain for, I don't know, probably about seven or eight years at that time, I had learned about the Masonic Lodge here. It was actually kind of a funny scenario because I lived right around the corner from the Prince Hall Lodge, and I thought that that was the Black Mountain Lodge. And when I told my friend that I was going to go down there and knock on the door, he said, oh no, you don't go to that one, you go to this other lodge. And I thought, oh, that's... That's different, I didn't know that aspect. So anyway, I had come down here and I met a couple of the other brothers and they invited me in and we just got talking and the next thing I know I was filling out a petition and um, came down here one night when they were having a practice and, <clears throat> and it started right about there. One thing that I looked forward to about Masonry, once I started coming to the lodge to, you know, work on some of the catechisms and such, I was meeting a lot of people that I wouldn't probably not have met otherwise in my other course of life in Black Mountain. And I felt like I learned a lot about <clears throat> the community, not just today, but years past and how it was kind of fun to, to realize who else we all kind of knew um, through our different walks of life. You know, one thing I really enjoy about being a part of the Lodge is not just putting on the degrees, but um, coaching candidates through their catechisms. Um, again, it's kind of fun to get to know people that I would not have met otherwise, and you get to know them on a different level if you're meeting early in the morning for coffee or sitting in a car somewhere or coming down here to the Lodge, and it's that's something that makes me <coughs> I don't know, more excited about coming down here when I have an active uh, role to play in a situation like that. Currently I'm counting the money and writing a lot of checks and paying the bills. I don't know how I s see that in the very, very long term, but I know that I'll always enjoy coming down here and doing what I can to help out. I think one of the most memorable things of, well, one of the things I remember the most about the year that I was master, and again this kind of goes back to the, my first introduction to masonry in this town, was we had a couple of occasions where we had invited some members of the Prince Hall Lodge to come down here and help out. One time they were here for a first degree, an entered apprentice degree and another time they were here to help out for a Veterans Day breakfast that we put on. And, you know, the Entered Apprentice degree was a lot of fun. We had a very small crowd here. But I know that some of the other members of this lodge that were here that night, some of the guys had been part of the lodge for a much longer time, and they knew these guys from the Prince Hall Lodge outside of Masonry, and I could tell that they were happy to sit in the lodge together and I don't know that they had expected that they would do that sometime. Um, the breakfast was a really great experience. We had just a handful of people from the VA here. And after we had eaten, and we all went into the lodge room, and all the folks that came in from the VA kind of talked about their experiences in their various arenas that they were participating in the military on some level. 
and I was sitting in a chair next to a, a man named O.L. Sherrill from the Prince Hall Lodge and we were sitting there watching and one of these guys from the VA was also a Mason and he, I, remember, I don't remember his name, but I remember he was in a very state-of-the-art wheelchair, <clears throat> all kinds of controls and hydraulics and when we got done he zipped right over to us and I thought, I, you know, this is the kind of thing where you're wrongly judging a book by its cover and I thought he was about to say something and I wasn't, didn't know if I'd be prepared for what he was going to say. And he came over and he said to me that he, this was a, that he wished his dad was alive. He said, you know, my dad raised me in some tiny little town in South Carolina and we never believed that we would see this day in masonry. And he just thought it was a really wonderful thing. And I, very quickly I was bawling all kinds of tears. And it was, I remember leaving that day and thinking, Wow, I comp, you know, I've had a great day and it's only about 10 o'clock in the morning, so the rest of the day is going to be fantastic.